I'm Adam. I'm Dan. And we are here to review Black Panther. Yeah. Uh, so, I'm going to start off for whatever, you know, two people follow us. Yeah. Adam posted <laughs> something on Facebook about how you're not going to want to miss this one. And I don't know what he was talking about. So, <laughs> <laughs> so don't get too overhyped. I don't know what this is going to be, but I, I'm not as excited about it as he is, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> well, it's just more, it's Black Panther. It's the, yeah, first, yeah, no, it's, yeah. it's the first review we're doing this year. Yeah, that's, that, that's true. It's the first one we're doing Basically, this year. Is, is, is what, and, more and or less what I was getting at. And it's, it's, yeah, a it's, a, it's a big one. I guess I'll start it with, by addressing, so I've seen, like, I follow a lot of people online who watch movies. Some of them do their own review series. Some of them just talk about it, like, on Twitter and whatever yeah. I follow them. But... Everyone has been ranting and raving about how great this movie is. Mm -hmm. And it's it's gone over gangbusters. And I mean, you know, you can't fight the box office receipts, yes. whether, you, whether or not you like the movie. Yeah. It seems to have, you know, I don't know if it's broken records yet, but it, it's doing a ton of money. Yeah, and it is. Disney will be very happy. But um, um, I don't know if we're going to have the same reaction that other people have been having. <laughs> um, which is not at all in any way to say it was a bad movie. I actually quite enjoyed it. I just don't see the, like, you know, starry-eyed, like, wonder that everyone else has with it. Yeah, like, um, like I, I'm the same way where it's like, you know, I was hyped for it because it, it's easy to be hyped for any Marvel film because yeah. it's a Marvel film, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, even, like, Ant-Man, like, when that was coming out, like, I wasn't that excited about it, but I was because it was a Marvel movie, yeah. you know? And you, you can trust it's going to at least be decent. Yeah, I mean, Marvel, <coughs> I, I would never say... I would never say Marvel's made really a bad movie. Um, to me, at least all our films have been somewhat decent. Um, now, I get a lot of flack for being a, a fucking Marvel hater from friends and people I know online and shit like that. And the, the thing is, like, I'm not a Marvel hater. I like Marvel films. I just don't hold them in, like, this high regard like everybody else does. There's no pedestal for me. To put Marvel up on, like Marvel, like tur turns out like decent fucking superhero movies. Like, like they're all to me average to good. Like, 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 like there's only a few that I really, really, really loved, and like those were Guardians of the Galaxy Volume One and Two and Thor Ragnarok. Like, I liked Civil War a lot. I liked uh, what do you call? It? I liked uh, uh, Winter Soldier. I liked that a lot. But like, I don't think they're like. Like these fucking masterpieces that some Marvel fans make them out to be. So when I kept hearing all this really good positive buzz over Black Panther, like I went in thinking to myself, like, okay, like the, blow me away. You know, mm -hmm. it's what I sat down in the theater and I was just like, I'm ready to be blown away. And the film didn't do it for me. No. The film did not blow me away whatsoever. I will say for my part, Nothing I'm saying is about this movie being bad. It's very well made. Um, there's, you know, there's a lot of good scenes in it, mm -hmm. and I and I appreciate a lot of the things they were trying to do. It just didn't really gel in a very satisfying way. I think is what it is for me. Like, uh, like I'll just come out and say it that I believe a lot of people are, are giving this film highly, really good positive reviews because it's the first like major studio high budget film that features a black superhero. Now, granted, we've had black superhero movies before. Like Blade. Like Blade. <laughs> and I believe that's really the only reason why I think people are really going crazy over this film is because it's really kind of like the first black superhero film that's not garbage. Right. Or is actually treated with some respect. And, and you know, like, and, and, and like, whereas the Blade, the first Blade movie especially, was, you know, it was very watchable and it, you know, mm -hmm. like, it, it was something interesting and, and fun to watch. Yeah. It didn't really follow the comics, whereas Black Panther... You know, not to an exact extent, but it is very faithful. To and, and, to, and to, to be to fair, you could movie. argue that, that, that Blade's not really a superhero. He's a vampire hunter. Right, so yeah, you could so just kind of argue really, that yeah. those movies aren't really a superhero movie. It's right, more they're of just a, based off comics, a yeah, yeah. war action type of movie. Yeah. But still, my, my point is that <coughs> there have been others in the past. There have been other mm -hmm. movies in the past to put a main like black character on the screen mm -hmm. and give you, you basically make him a hero. Like yeah. there, there's been plenty, but I think I really think that all the love and the the hype and everything is surrounding this is just because this is the first one, A, from Marvel Studios to do it, and B, is that it's it's handled with at least care and handled with respect and with yes. the skill set that Marvel has at their disposal. And, 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 and I will say, again, I appreciate a lot of the things they were, they were doing and going for, mm -hmm. because they do bring up a lot of, like, 
historical and like political points yeah. about you know not you know I mean African Americans kind of because that's where the movie was made but yeah. um, but you know about black people in general and and their history and, and interactions with the rest of the world mm-hmm. and they bring up a lot of that which I think is good the good guy wins but you don't necessarily see his point of view victorious mm-hmm. it's more just that he literally won the fight yeah and that that that's what made it less <laughs> satisfying for me whereas Civil War another Marvel movie that brought up you know, maybe not real world stuff because it involves superheroes, but it was still a very political thing. It was about, you know, your freedoms versus, yeah. you know, like responsibility to the people around you and to society and everything. And that one, you know, it was another one where they let you see both sides and they let you understand it, but it was a Captain America movie. And at the end, you understand that while Captain America may not have technically won, his his worldview was the one they presented as he he got what he needed out of it. Yeah. So that so that's what I'm comparing it to really is is not that I disagree with T'Challa or I think um, the Black Panther was wrong or that his worldview was wrong, but that the movie didn't bring him didn't show him as the winner in a satisfying way. He won the fight. I don't know that he won the ideological war. Yeah. And that which which would be fine if if that had been something that I felt they were building to, that, like, maybe it will lead to another conflict. Mm-hmm. But they still very much presented it as, like, nope, it's over now. You're, you're not wrong if you love this film. If you love this film and you uh, see yourself or what you consider your cultural or heritage or race or whatever represented up on the big screen, that's fine. Like, if that's what you're getting out of it and that's what you enjoy about it, that is fantastic, and I'm glad you like the movie. It's just, unfortunately, the film's just not for me. And I know there's, like, some people I know that when I tell them that, they're going to tell me, well, you don't get it because you're not black, or you don't get it because you're white, and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And for my defense on that, I'll just say this, okay? I go to films to be entertained. I don't go to films because I want to see or identify with somebody on the fucking screen at. I want to go see a movie that's going to entertain me, give me a great story, and fucking fantastic characters that I fucking wish I was, Mm -hmm. not what I am. I can't go watch Indiana Jones and identify with Indiana Jones because Indiana Jones, A, isn't real. B, he's a fucking archaeologist that gets into fucking adventures and punches Nazis in the face. I can never be that. I don't identify with that. I don't sit there and say, that's me on screen. Mm. It's not. That's what I go to the movies for. I go to the movies to be entertained and to watch somebody else punch the Nazis. It's just the idea that I, 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 I don't think I have to be a black person to understand a black film, or I don't have to be a Spanish to understand a Spanish film or Spanish characters. I can enjoy it even though these aren't white people, you know? And that's just my argument towards that. Now, with that out of the way, when it comes to this film, as I said, I didn't hate this film, but there's... Two standout things about this film that I absolutely loved, and I wish there was more of. And their names are Andy Serkis and Michael B. Jordan. Mm. (laughs) Because Andy Serkis gives a great performance that could be over the top at times, but I think his character needed to be over the top. Right. And Michael B. Jordan as Killmonger is such a fucking great performance to the point where it's like he's a villain, but you understand what his motives are, where he's coming from, and you understand even his ideology. Right. You completely understand it, and you actually can sympathize with this character. And, like, you know, he's not just the typical, like, I'm a bad guy because I'm a bad guy type of villain. He's, right. he's bad because of circumstances and because of upbringing and fucking and all. And, and again, like, his ideology. And the funny thing is you can see his points and be like, well, he has a point, you mm-hmm. know, and then, you know, then you get, you know, you get Black Panther in there and he's yeah. the other side of the coin sort right. of thing. And I absolutely love Michael B. Jordan's performance. He stole every scene he was in. Any scene that he was involved in, he stole and so did Andy Serkis, who I absolutely loved. Mm-hmm. Um, and to me, those are the, the biggest, the two big highlights of the film, in my opinion. And unfortunately, there wasn't enough of them in it. Right. Having said that now, uh, the bad part, the, the the things I didn't care for performance wise, unfortunately, was Black Panther. Like it's not that he's giving a bad performance or anything. It's just that Black Panther is one of the least interesting heroes in my opinion. He he's not that charismatic. He's not funny. He's 
I guess I want to say he's he, he's basically like Captain America. That's one of my biggest complaints about Captain America, especially like in the first film. The good guy to be the good guy mm-hmm. sort of thing. Now, Captain now has evolved mm-hmm. throughout the movies, but... The worst part about this is that we were introduced to Black Panther already in Civil War. And in Civil War, I felt he was charming. I felt he was charismatic. And I felt he, you know, seemed like he had character to him. And then in this film, it was kind of like all that was kind of stripped away. Yeah, he says a few quips here and there, but he's just not that interesting of a hero. Like... Like, we were introduced, like, uh, like again, I, I don't remember the character's name or anything, but, like, that one tribe that, like, lives in the mountains. That oh, yeah, basically, Jabari. That, yeah. yeah, that basically, um, you know, are, are like, uh, they, they, they wear, like, gorilla, like, masks mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Like, the main, like, leader of that group. Like, he's only in the movie literally at the beginning and at the very end. And he, to me, was more interesting. Mm-hmm. He, was, he was far more interesting of a character than the fucking main character of the movie. And then, like, and then like the worst part about also, like, the relationships is just Black Panther and his love interest, mm-hmm. um, whose name now Nakia. 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 Like, they have no chemistry. Like, like, like they talk and, like, they kind of imply there's history there and stuff like that, but there's no chemistry between those two characters. Now, um, now I'm forgetting the other one's name, uh, Okoye, right? Uh, Okoye, yeah. Okoye. Um, his right hand, like his general, yeah. who was played by the actor, I forget the actress's name, but it's the same actress who plays Michonne in The Walking Dead. Yeah. Like, Black Panther and her have a lot of screen time together, and they have way more chemistry than him and his love interest to the point where I'm like, like they really should have just made her his love interest. Now, granted, I don't know though that goes against what happens in the comic books. I don't know even if his love interest in this movie is even from the comic books. I have no idea. But him and 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 the other and the and Okoya, they have way more chemistry together than he does with his eventual love interest in the film. And like that's <coughs> it, it's just one of those things where it's like his love interest just felt like an unnecessary character, and she was only there to be the love interest and nothing else. I mean, you're right about uh, him and Okoye, but the one that I, the one that I did like was him and his sister Shuri. They actually, I was going to get to that. They, they actually had some some interactions that felt like they really yeah, were brother and sister. Like like she, I don't know the actress's name unfortunately, yeah, but she was really good, mm. and they have good chemistry, and that was really fun. Like you believe that's brother and sister, right? Yeah. There. You believe you know that they're fucking with each other, yeah. and they're, you know they're poking fun at each other and all this stuff. You could see that, and that was great. That's what the movie needed more of then. Like, like, it needed more of this. It needed more, a little bit more of that. Because, like I said, his love interest, uh, Nakia, yeah. was just, just basically has, is, is, was as interesting as a fucking frozen fish. <laughs> like, like, it just added nothing to the movie. And unfortunately, there's a lot of shit and time devoted to them that mm-hmm. goes nowhere. It yeah. just doesn't make any sense. Um, so that's my, one of my biggest complaints. Another, another big complaint is Forrest Whitaker, who I felt they completely wasted. Because Forrest Whitaker is a fantastic actor, mm-hmm. and they give him a role that, you know, on paper seems important, but ultimately doesn't really amount to too much in the film. Right. And he's really there to set up a twist that wasn't even really a twist. Yeah. And I'll get to that probably a little later. But it was just, it just felt like a waste to have Forrest Whitaker in the film if you gave him nothing interesting to do. And mm. plus, he was doing his Saw Guerrero voice. Yeah, he really which, was. Which doesn't sound African or anything. It's just no. really weird sounding. Yeah. I will say, I, I enjoyed the visuals of the movie. I mean, I say this about most Marvel movies. They're very colorful. Mm-hmm. But I like that this one, you know, it went a different route. It was largely, you know, being largely set in Africa. It was a lot of jungle, a lot, mm-hmm. of, a lot of greens, and a lot of things like that. There's the part where they go to South Korea for whatever reason. Which, I mean, looked cool. Because, you know, Seoul is a, is yeah. a very interesting looking city. But, on the other hand, when you set up Wakanda as this technological marvel in whatever their capital city is, as as a big advanced city, I don't know why you couldn't have just done it there. I was, but... <laughs> was going to say, that uh, that was somebody else I forgot to mention <coughs> in, in my little rant there, is Martin Freeman. Oh, yeah. Who's another fantastic actor. Um, it, it's funny. Now, granted, like, you know, he had some good moments. He had mm-hmm. some funny moments and shit like that. But again, ultimately was not needed for this movie. Was no. not really needed at all for this story because he doesn't really a provide them with any information, and they don't really provide. I mean, they kind of provide him with information, but it's more information he mostly learned from the Claw yeah. when he was interrogating the Claw. Like his 
his involvement did not seem at all necessary for the like, film. The thing with him was, and I was thinking about this too, was like, I get what they were going for. It's, it's yet another thing where like, I, I get what they were going for. Yeah. And like, there's a few times in the movie where they make jokes about like, you know, ha ha, he's the white guy. Yeah. And I'm actually fine with that. I, I actually wouldn't mind that if they'd gone further with it. Mm. But it doesn't ultimately lead to anything. Part of his arc in the movie is like, you know, he finds out essentially that, or not essentially, like Wakanda has very much been lying about what it is. Yeah. The rest of the world doesn't know that they're technologically advanced. And so he finds out they've been lying. And he they kind of hint that he's upset about this and like that like it's a big deal. Yeah. It, it, uh, but that's another thing they don't go far enough with where like he doesn't even act like it's a problem. But then toward the end of the movie... They kind of give him, like, an arc where, like, they need his help because he used to be a pilot, and he's got a pilot, he's got to, like, remotely pilot one of their ships to shoot down the things that are going to take the vibranium weapons out out of yeah. Wakanda. And so, he and he's got a thing where, like, the, the bad guys find out about this, and they're going to blow out, blow up the room that he's in, and he's only got so much time, but he's like, well, I gotta get this done, so leave me in. Yeah. And it's like, it would have been an effective moment, one, had there been more build-up about, like, you know, how he's upset that they lied, mm -hmm. and how, you know, this is a big deal, and, like, you know, you can't just keep this from everyone, and all of that stuff, but also, I think, spoiler, he does end up succeeding, and he survives, not only does he survive, we just see him kind of run off screen, and it's just implied no, that's that he gets the, out. I was going to say, that was the thing. We actually didn't see him survive. That's like, true. He just kind of ran away. He so just ran away. He could be dead. Well, yeah, but... he could be, but, like, they never touch on it. No, they never, don't. Like, they find him. So I'm assuming he, he survived. But, yeah, it's more just like, you know, okay, you succeeded. Get out of the room now. Yeah. And, like, he does, and then he just leaves. So assuming he survived, but that's more important. It's like, I actually think it would have been better for the arc if maybe he didn't. Like, yeah. he succeeds in shooting down the ship. Right as the, the room yeah. blows up or something. I think that would have been better because, again, I get what they were going for, and I'm not in any way offended about Ha Ha White Boy. I think it should have been more of a thing. <laughs> there is tension there, and, like, you know, yeah. like it, it is a problem between the two of them, but then he realizes the greater good, and then they realize that, you know, he, that, like, you know, there are good yeah. white people or, or just good outsiders in general. Yeah. Because that's another thing in the movie is, like, it's not all about white people. They just don't like outsiders, period, even if you're black. But, um, I get it. And I appreciate it, but it wasn't that satisfying. Yeah, and like since we're on the subject of like build ups and, and character yeah. payoffs and shit like that, <coughs> uh, one thing I, I will say I did not particularly care for is a the like I'm assuming everyone's seen this film by the time they're gonna watch this, so I'm not gonna I'm not holding any spoilers. I mean, statistically, it, yeah. everyone. Has I seen mean, it I'm not holding any spoilers back, but like yeah. when Killmonger shows up and basically reveals that he is the cousin of of Black, Black Panther, Panther yeah. and that he's going to. Um, basically uh, challenge for the throne. Yeah. And then, like, they learn the truth that, you know, fucking Black Panther's father actually killed his father, mm -hmm. so Black Panther's father killed his own brother. Shit like that. And, like, that stuff, like, could could have been treated very well, could have been yeah. treated very seriously, could have been handled really well, and could have been an interesting thing to explore and fucking, you know, go down. And they really don't. They, they don't touch on that that much in this movie. It's yeah. kind of mentioned... And then kind of forgotten about. And actually, now that you mention it, I, I I just realized part of the the plot is, you know, again talking about like keeping secrets and mm -hmm. and lying is that T'Challa didn't know any of this. He finds out essentially along with everyone else, like very yeah. shortly before everyone else does. And so the the whole thing was like his his father T'Chaka back when he was Black Panther, he went and found what is, what was his brother yeah. who, who had like been out on like a spy mission he he found out that he had betrayed wakanda like very specifically betrayed wakanda by telling claw how to get in and steal vibranium and so t'chaka kills him and then leaves but my thing is the whole thing is it, we find out that like the reason no one knows that this happened is because he came back and basically just said well he's missing so he doesn't tell anyone that he killed him but my thing is why not you already know for a fact he betrayed you. Like, there's no way Claw could have gotten in without insider information. Mm -hmm. The only person who would have had that information would be a Prince of Wakanda. Yeah. Why didn't you just go back and say, he betrayed us, I tried to bring him back to face to face counsel, he tried to kill Zuri, I think is, is um, Forrest Whitaker's character. Yeah. Thing. He tried to kill Zuri, so I killed him. Just tell them that. Yeah. Just tell them that you killed him. Now, that still doesn't address the child, but like... There doesn't have to be this big cover-up of the whole thing. Because yeah. that basically becomes 
part of the thing. It's like, you know, he killed his own brother. Yeah. He betrayed his blood. It's like, right, but dude tried to attack. Like, yeah. of course he killed him. Like, <laughs> he, 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 he tried to attack after betraying the country. Like, mm-hmm. I don't understand... What the betrayal here is? Well, yeah, like, but like, like, just tell them that you killed him. It's yeah. not that hard. And like, that's the whole thing is like, is like, they could have explored that really well. And they could have made yeah. basically could have made the whole movie this, but mm-hmm. they didn't. They it's just kind of mentioned and then just kind of used as, um, uh, as basically uh, the reasoning kind of behind then why everyone's so quick to turn on Black Panther, right? Because because basically what happens is the Killmonger challenges from the throne, Killmonger wins. Basically, is what happens. Yeah. So he becomes king of Wakanda or prince of Wakanda, whatever you want to say. King, king. Oh, okay, king of Wakanda. So he's the new Black Panther, apparently. Okay, and the whole thing is that you have um, that you have a side of the people in there that don't agree with him, mm-hmm. and then you have the people that seem like they didn't agree with him, but then all of a sudden, literally, like in ten seconds, go, "All right, he's our king. We're gonna follow him, and he's right about everything." Mm-hmm. And then it, it's just so not believable like it's no. like wait like so a quick turnaround and then the thing that pisses me off is especially uh I, again i'm forgetting the guy's name but the guy from get out like yeah. who's who's friends with the black panther it they explain that he's upset because black panther ended up um not getting claw. not getting claw he was supposed to bring claw back because mm-hmm. the, the guy explains that claw killed his parents so he wants claw to come back and face judgment in wakanda and then what ends up happening is Black Panther ends up actually capturing the, the claw, mm-hmm. um, ends up actually capturing him, um, brings him in with Martin Freeman, where Martin Freeman, Freeman questions him, but then he gets broken out by Killmonger. So when he when Black Panther comes back and the guy's all happy because he thinks that he's got the claw, Black Panther goes, he slipped through our grass, like that. Mm-hmm. And then the guy acts like, the most pissiest, whiniest teen you could think of. Right. Because daddy didn't bring home the car you, he promised you. Yeah. And, like, that's it. He just goes, like, look, I guess you can't, like, you know, yeah. you, you can't yeah, live it's up. no or, different than when your father yeah. was in charge. And he walks out, and it's like, well, two seconds, buddy. Like, hey, yeah. we did capture him. I could have killed him. Yeah. But fucking uh, oh, Coco told me not to. I'm forgetting your name now. Uh, Michonne's character. Okoya? Oh, uh, uh, Okoya, yeah. Okoya, like Okoya told me not to, mm-hmm. and we brought him in, but fucking, you know, because mm-hmm. I didn't kill him right then and there, he got away because this guy fucking showed up and kidnapped him. Yeah. He doesn't tell him that, so basically he's just under the impression that he just didn't capture him. Mm-hmm. And so he's pissed, so then later on, when Killmonger ends up becoming, becoming king, it's like, that's his motivation now, is, no, I'm gonna listen to him because... He, well, you, he brought me Claw. Yeah, because you couldn't fucking kill Claw. Mm. This guy did. You know, this guy brought me Claw. It comes to a head where, like, he does end up siding with Killmonger. And, like, so it's, like, his forces versus Okoye, who finally, you know, mm-hmm. turns on Killmonger and is, like, is like, I, like, like, I don't care if the law says you're king. You're not fit to be king. Mm-hmm. And, like, I kind of like that, how she had a big conflict going. Mm-hmm. And, like, she was loyal to the country, but then ultimately it's like, eh, I can't put up with this. You're a monster. Yeah. Like... Like I kind of like that, but then it's his it's his forces versus hers, and there's a big conflict. But then the conflict is basically not even decided. Like basically, like he just loses at the end. Like finally, yeah. you know, like they get the upper hand and just take him down. And like she stares him down. She doesn't kill him or anything. But yeah. But like it, oh, like, and, like and it's that. But like it, it could have been a whole thing where like. Black Panther <coughs> reveals, like, no, but Killmonger was working with Claw. No. He, he, he just killed him to get on your good side. I was going to say, also, that whole that whole fight scene, mm. the greatest part about that is that mm. the only reason fucking, um, only, the only reason that the one guy gives up to Okoya mm-hmm. is because they established earlier that Okoya and him are dating. Yeah. So, like, at one point, she's, like, po- mm-hmm. she's pointing a spear at him, basically, yeah. and he's just like, you what, would you, kill me you, my like, love. you would kill me, my love? And she's like, yes, for the country sort of thing. Yeah. And, like, that's why then he gives up. He goes, okay, fuck it, you know, yeah. I'm gonna give up. And I'm sitting there going like, oh yeah, because that's right, because there's that five second conversation in the beginning of the fucking movie almost two hours ago yeah. that implied that they were together. I yeah. forgot all about that. Because you wanna know why? Because they share no fucking screen time until that fucking scene again. Yeah. It's it's stuff like that that I don't understand. I'm like, this is not written well, this is not done right. You have too many characters that you're trying to set up shit for, mm-hmm. and you're not fulfilling or fucking following through with any of them. 
Yeah. You know what you needed to focus on? Black Panther, Killmonger, that was it. They they had the strongest and best relationship you could have fucking made a whole movie about. Mm-hmm. Lost cousins. They didn't know they existed. Fucking father, fucking one father killed the other one's father. Mm-hmm. That's all you needed. You didn't need the love interest. You didn't fucking need uh, Okoya and that love interest. You know, her, her, her guy. You didn't fucking need Forrest Whitaker's character. You didn't need fucking Martin Freeman's character. You didn't need them to go to fucking Seoul, South Korea. Okay? No. Um, or I don't even know if it was Seoul, but it was South Korea they went to. They went to Korea either way. You didn't need that scene, even though it it, it turned into a cool action sequence, but still, you didn't even nearly need that scene. And also, you didn't really even need the claw when you think about it. Now, granted, I like that they brought the claw back because we haven't seen him. Yeah, because because his whole thing was Avengers 2. He had the vibranium. Yeah, so So it's a callback to that. So it's a callback to that. It's good that, you know, we're we're at least, you know, following through one character... So, but the whole idea is that they added all this stuff in that they just don't put any substance behind whatsoever. Like, they don't follow through, they don't build upon any of this shit. They just kind of present it, and it was like, okay, so basically, she's fucking him, he's interested in her, but uh, she's not fucking him anymore, and uh, yeah, these two are cousins. Like, that's this. And I'm sitting there going like, pick one. Mm-hmm. Just pick one and fucking follow through with it. Will right. you please? Because they try to throw in a bunch of different shit and none of it is gets satisfyingly wrapped up whatsoever. And it's just in the end, it's like to me, it just felt like this seemed rush and it seemed like it had about five or six different rewrites and they tried to keep the best parts of all of them. But the problem is, is that when you do that, you're not fully um, basically pushing these things and fulfilling them completely. And, like, you know, you got a talented director behind the film, and it's like, he can't look at this script and be like, okay, but, like, like we need something here, though. Why don't we do a little more with uh, Killmonger, you know? Mm-hmm. Because we don't, because basically, I'm going about, I don't know, 80 pages here, he's not in it, yeah. you know? He doesn't show up until 80 pages later, you know, again. Like, maybe we should have a little more of him. I mean, there were problems with the film, and I repeat what I said before. I don't know, or I, I, I mean, I think I just proved, I don't share the starry-eyed wonder that apparently everyone else has about the movie. Mm-hmm. But I still enjoyed it. <clears throat> I, I had a good time in the theater. I thought there was good action. Even though Black Panther isn't, like, the most, like, creative superhero with his powers, mm-hmm. I think they utilized his abilities well. They showed off what he could do and, like, showed, you know, why he is an effective superhero and all that. There were problems with the writing, uh, largely in that there was, you know, a lot of time times there weren't enough build up and the conclusions weren't as satisfying as I was hoping they would be and I will always say I mean we touch on this a lot in the movies but I will always say if it's something that I can point out and say I think this could have been done better and here's how mm-hmm. basically to me it feels like that like that is a failure because I'm not a professional writer as mm-hmm. much as I like writing and I and I do you know, I, I read stuff and I, I look into it and I, I've done a little research, but like, I'm not a writer. So if I can look at it and say, I, I think I know how this could have been done better, I think that's a failure then. Like, it's one thing if I just don't like it, but I can't point to it, maybe that's my fault then. But mm-hmm. if I can look at it and say, I think you could have done this better, here's how, I, I think that means the writers didn't do that, the people being paid didn't do their jobs right then. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's why I harp on writing a lot. But, so there were problems with the writing, and I think that more than anything was probably the 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 reason I, I didn't have the same reaction to the movie because I, I see what they were going for and again I do appreciate it it's not it's not like I think they completely failed at getting their point across mm-hmm. I just don't think I I just do think they failed at making it as satisfying as it should have been mm-hmm. because again I can appreciate you know like a gray area half the movies we watched last year that we loved had that gray area of like mm-hmm. you know you see both sides. You might pick one over the other. You know, the heroes might have one over the other. But you understand where they're coming from, and, and you see where the cracks are. But they handled it so well. And then this movie just didn't. And I think that's what it comes down to. But ultimately, as much as there were problems, and I don't have the wild-eyed, you know, I'm going to give it a 12 out of 10, just because I like, like <laughs> I'm definitely not doing that. I'm going to give it a 7, which I feel like for me is pretty much my average at this point. Like, I give that to most things I see. Yeah. Because... Again, I had a good time. I enjoyed the movie. Then there was enough good that, that, you know, none of the stuff ruined it for me. It's just not the same mind blow that everyone else got, I guess. All right. 
Um, okay, so my overall thoughts um, are that I, I th there's things I like about the film, and those things are what I wish they would have maybe focused more on. Um, again, to me, the two biggest standouts for this film are Michael B. Jordan and Andy Serkis and their performances. They play uh, where Killmonger plays probably one of the more sympathetic and one of the most relatable bad bad guys, villains in the Marvel film. Um, Andy Serkis plays one of the most over the top, and it was in, and I think his role called for that. Mm -hmm. And I love their performances because they stole every scene that they were in. Um, I the action sequences, except for the the very first action sequence, all of them were really good. They're a lot of fun to watch. There's relationships in this film that don't make any sense. There's characters that to me were completely throwaways that you did not need in the film. Um, unfortunately, Black Panther is one of the weakest parts of the whole movie, and that's a sad to say because he's the fucking main character. He's not that interesting, really, in my opinion. He, he was far more interesting in Civil War. And overall, it's like, it, it's a two-hour and 14-minute film, and my God, does it feel like it's two hours and 15 minutes. Because a lot of Marvel films, the good ones fly right by, you don't even notice the runtime. This one, I fucking, I fucking did right away. It's so a lot of scenes of talking that lead to nothing. Um, so overall, I, I liked it as much as I like, say, something like Doctor Strange and Thor. Which, again, I've said aren't really bad Marvel films. They're just kind of the average Marvel movies. So I'm going to give it a point lower than you. I'm giving Black Panther a 6 out of 10. Because I honestly do feel it's just a slightly above average film. It, it, especially when you're talking about this genre. You know... And it's like, I've seen far better, I've seen ones that are wit written way better, and I've seen ones that are handled well better, and I've seen ones that were acted well better. And this isn't one of them, unfortunately. And like, you know, if you love the film, that's great. Like, I never, you know, I, I'm not one of those people that sit there and say, if you love a film, you're wrong about it. I'm right. not one of those people. Like, if you love the film, that's fucking great. I, I'm glad you got enjoyment out of it. Anything you want to add, or? Mm, no, I'm good. Alright, so, to recap, we've Rambled on way long. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, to recap, uh, Black Panther, he gives it a 7. I give it a 6. Uh, definitely, again, we're not saying don't check it out. Uh, definitely, I'd say go check it out in the movie theater if you're interested in it, which I think the bill made like over $300 million this weekend. Yeah, yeah so, so go check it out if you're one of the three yeah, people that hasn't seen it. Yeah, if you're one but... of the three people who haven't seen it yet, I guess, you know, I will say, even though I'm giving it a 6, go ahead and check it out for yourself. Mm -hmm. You'll probably like it a lot. Um... So that's going to do it for this review. Uh, for that, I'm going to say please thumbs up the video if you like it. Please subscribe to our channel and please leave a comment. And let us know what you guys thought of uh, Black Panther. Um, if we had any kind of big audience, I'm sure we'd be getting a lot of shit right now in the comment section. But we don't, unfortunately. But that's fine. <laughs> um, so I don't know what we'll be back with. I'm Ooh. trying to think of like what's coming out. And there just unfortunately, there just really isn't anything that interesting coming out yeah um like i said i kind of want to see death wish when that comes out i don't know if you want to go see that with me oh but one thing he's going to come see with me because oh, no. i'm going to make sure he comes no no is hurricane heist no we saw a trailer for this movie and if you haven't seen the trailer for it you need to check it out because i can't believe this film's actually getting a theatrical release and we are going to be there on opening night to see this because I have to see this movie. So, see you later. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs>